Hey, it's your TC Josie. In this video, I'll be going over the open to close to Google Workspace or Google Suite API uh, synchronization, as well as connecting your Google Calendar, as well as having your events in your OTC calendar as well. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more tips and tricks on OTC productivity and optimization, and head over to www tcoptimize.com. I offer group one-on-one -on -one trainings as well as complete and partial setups. Let's go ahead and dive in. So you'll want to have a few uh, tabs open, which you can see here. I've got my calendar for Google open and my open to close. I'm going to go ahead and make this small and I'm going to look over here. It's so much bigger of a screen. All right. So uh, the first thing we'll want to do is obviously get our Google workspace connected. So you can do if you've still got your onboarding steps uh, here, excuse me, um, if you've still got them here, you can go to this uh, this button here and then this one here and it will show you the steps or if you're past this point and you've hit uh, I'm finished you can go over to the API the app and API um, tab there you'll authorize Google and then you'll just follow these steps I'll walk you through them so you just click here and click here that basically just copied that link for me. I'm gonna go ahead and sign into my account and it looks like it defaulted to my um, transaction coordination business email. Um, so I will go ahead and sign into my uh, account that I want to sync with my OTC. All right, once we're here, we'll hit configure new app and then OAuth. We'll click here and paste that link that we just copied by clicking and hit search. Open to close will show up. You'll hit uh, select here and one or the other, it doesn't matter. And then hit select. You'll hit trusted and configure. And this came up for me because I've already got them in here but you will just have a successful synchronization with the uh, open to close. So this is basically um, whitelisting open to close, allowing them to be on the whitelist instead of the blacklist with your account. So you can come back here. We've just done all of these steps and you can click I've whitelisted open to close. Let's set up my email. You'll connect the Google, sign in one more time, and then you'll allow them to access all of this information so that you can do the things that you need to do. And it's been successful. Easy as that. So the next step, you'll probably want to go ahead and just jump back in here. You see here that it's connected because it no longer says, you know, connect it. It says to disconnect. Um, I don't know if this matters too much and I'm not sure exactly what it does, but I'm going to go ahead and hit set as default. Oh, I know exactly what it does. So um, actually, I'm going to cancel this to see if it shows up a different way for me. Um, and we'll talk about that when I get there. Anyways, okay, so now we'll want to just go into the, we'll do that right now, actually. Okay, so if you go to the settings wheel and hit email addresses, it'll bring you to those settings. I didn't set it up as my default, but it might have, since it was the account that I sent that I signed it up with, it might have um, just automatically added that as a default. But if you had an at gmail.com account and you had to get a G Suite or Google Workspace for um, OTC, then you can go ahead and you know do that with an alias, which you'll see here. This is an alias that I have set up as my account so that I can send mail as my tc by josie at gmail.com um, so if you've got an email that you've always used for your transaction coordination business via gmail and you just purchased an um google workspace or google suite account for open to close you can always mark this as a default so you're always sending emails from this you're still going to be able to see all the emails that are sent um, through your gmail and everything so it, it'll function just the 
same. We're just using it as an e alias through open to close so that we can go ahead and actually use open to close, which is a huge benefit. Totally a, a very slight inconvenience, but totally worth it. Okay, so uh, now that we've got that put together, I would like to just hop into the calendars. Now that um, you know we've got the email set up, everything's good with that. Now you've got your email synced. Um, let's head over to the calendars and we've got all of these calendars, which you'll see in my, I'll go ahead and close this out since I'm done. Um, in my calendars, and let me move this here. Um, I've got all of these different uh, calendars and I'm, you see them all here. I'm going to go ahead and make this business one, one that I can add to my OTC calendar. So by clicking add on these, it'll allow the sync to happen with your OTC. While right now we're able to go ahead and start syncing to our Google Calendar, this will allow all of those events to also show up in our OTC calendar. This is a super important piece if you also want to be tracking things within OTC. So you'll hit add so that that shows up and we will go ahead and test this out. So um, we'll go to properties here. I've already put a test property in here to kind of play around with. The first thing you'll wanna do when you go into, when you go ahead and set up a new uh, transaction, the first thing you'll wanna do is go to this uh, down arrow and then defaults and settings. Scroll all the way down to this property uh, date sync. You'll pick the calendar that you want it to show up on. I'm just going to choose calendar. You can choose any of them that you want. Um, but because that business one is the one that I also added to um, the uh, settings in the background, you can add multiple. So this is one of the ones that I, th this is the only one that I set up. So I'm going to go ahead and sync to that one. Now, there aren't any dates right now, but let me see if I plug in a date, if it'll show up. So I'm going to put the contract date for today. And now that it's in here, I want to double check that it went ahead. Yep, it went in here. So we are good to go. It automatically synced within seconds. You saw that, but not milliseconds. It was really from one thing to another. So it's on there. I do want you to um, keep in mind here, there's a, a really important step that a lot of people uh, seem to miss. Um, this little calendar next to the date means that it's being API synced. If you've got something like this, like the closing date here, there is no date, but there's also no calendar, no little calendar icon next to it. That means it's not set to API sync you'll want to go to your field editor if you ever see that and then you'll go down to the closing date oh there it is and then you'll notice here that this is shaded gray if you want it to be api synced you'll want it purple if you don't want something like let's just say i don't want the AP, uh the possession date i'm gonna uncheck this so that it is gray it's not gonna show up on the API. So let's go back into this transaction and we'll notice that now this closing date has the little API and we'll go ahead and plug in an address, or I'm sorry, a date here, let's just say Friday. And now when I go here, it's there and here. I've got both of my dates. Um, so now that we've got this set up, the possession date, that calendar completely disappeared. So it's not working. Go back to the field editor if you do need it to appear and make sure that that is purple. So uh, the next thing that I'll go ahead and uh, kind of go over and let me just make sure. Okay, perfect. Um, the next tip is going to be to go ahead and have that ease of having the calendar invite. So um, having it this way, when you are um, sharing this calendar event, you'll actually have to go into the calendar event itself. And I actually, here, let me just go ahead and add a contact. Um, I don't have anyone here, so I'm gonna create a contact. Josie test. 
Josie at gmail.com. And I don't have to have a role. I'm just going to save it here because you need a contact in there, obviously, to send calendar invites to. So now if I go ahead and click that date, I have this option, available contacts, to share this event with. I would click that, save, and when we save it, they'll get an automatic email invitation saying, you know, Josie is inviting you to an event called contract date on 716, which will add it to their calendar after they hit accept. But me, I work with teams that have a lot of transactions going on. The last thing that they want to do is have to go in and click five different dates for, you know, three transactions that they just put under. So the way to kind of um, bypass that needing to hit that accept for each and every event that you share with them, you can actually go over to uh, your calendar and we're going to add a calendar. Create a new calendar and I'm going to name this Josie Agent. Create calendar. So uh, now that I've created this Josie Agent calendar, I can go back here. And um, this is uh, another very important step to make sure that things show up in your OTC calendar. Is it the OTC calendar? Let me see if it shows up now. Let me just double check. There's a lot of moving parts here, so I just want to make sure I'm giving you the right information. So it is showing here. Um, let me think what it is that needs to happen and why it is. Oh, okay, it's already made public. So that add button before may be to, it's, it's an important step as is this one. So when you first start a calendar, um, this is gonna be defaulted to uh, make available for TC Optimize, whatever email address is it's set up on. Um, so I just have already had this made public, this calendar specifically. So this is also a super important step and something that you don't want to miss even, you know, if you're not doing this, this for other agents, but I just went ahead and did that Josie agents, right? So the first thing you'll want to do is come here and hit settings and sharing. You'll want to make this public so that it does sync with your, um, it might not be syncing. Oh yeah, yes, it is. Sorry. I'm, I'm, piecing this together as this is my first time in a long time. So thanks for hanging in there. Um, so uh, yes, make it available to the public. That's allowing it to share with OTC. Otherwise, if it's just with TC Optimized, it's only sharing with the people within my organization. Um, making it public allows OTC to grab that date um, and put it on the OTC calendar. So it only happened before because I already had this business one public. So um, we will want to make this public so it syncs to our calendar in OTC. And then um, now that it's here, um, we'll also want to go down and add people. So you're going to add your agent, or all of your agents. I'm just going to do transactions. Yeah, that's it. Um, and then when I send it to them, they will receive an email and they will accept the shared calendar. Now, every time that you go into a transaction, and you can definitely uh, share it to multiple transactions. If you wanted everything in one place, but you also wanted things um, in specific new calendars like I just prepared, um, you can do that. So um, since I just added this one, it's probably not completely synced. So I, yep, it's not. So we'll want to go to the settings here and then we'll go to global settings, didn't click, and then calendars. So I just added that new calendar 
So you'll want to resync since this the, the initial setting didn't have that. So you'll want to resync and you'll watch that appear. Watch. Oh my gosh, I can't see it. What did I name it? Hold on. I named it, oh, Josie Cruz. Okay, I just named it Josie Cruz. So now we'll want to add that one as well. So this ad is making sure that we add these to the specific calendar and the um, settings being public adds it to OTC, just so we're clear. Okay, so um, that's all set up. Now I've got Josie Cruz in here. I've added it to the calendar. And now if I wanna go in here and go to defaults and settings, scroll down here and then also add it. So I've got it in the business one, but I also want to add it to the Josie Cruz one that I just created for my agent. I can add it there too. So let's go ahead and just check that that worked. So I've got both of these open. The Josie Cruz is red. The business is purple. So it looks like this one did. Why didn't that one do? I wonder. Oh yeah, that was the right place. Um, closing date. Oh, because I didn't add it to that person's calendar. Okay. I think. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This here. So Josie Cruz. Let's see if adding that one will work. Yeah, it worked now. So it would be manually. Oh, okay. So if we had those two, yeah, that is a little bit weird that we had to um, automatically do um, I, or manually do that uh, because I did sync the API calendar here to the Josie Cruz. So that is a little weird, but if you ever run into issues, that's why when it comes to multiple calendars. So you can, let's just try to add a new date. This one is synced. So let's just do this one for tomorrow. Let's see if it pops up. So that one popped up to the Josie one. So it defaults to one. So you would just need to, any new ones, you would need to go in and add it to the other one. That doesn't make much sense, but it is what it is. Maybe stick to just having it on one calendar, <laughs> but you can have it on two if you need it to. Um, so, okay, perfect. Um, I think that is it for that tip. Again, like and subscribe if you found this useful. Also, head over to my website if you have, ever need any group one-on-one -on -one training. I do setups, build-outs, um, partial and um, full, complete build-outs. So I am happy to help any way I can. Feel free to reach out with any questions. I love brainstorming and strategizing on different ways to use open and close. So I look forward to speaking with you and uh, seeing you around. Bye.